Hey y'all, this is David. Today on the channel I'm going to be showing you how to take that motherboard that I showed you how to prep with the other previous video. And today we're going to be showing you how to install it into the case. Stay tuned and enjoy. Thank you. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is install the IO shield. Um, if you look at your motherboard, you can tell the PSU and the audio. Just make sure they line up right when your motherboard sits down in there. Most generally, your audio ports will be going towards the bottom of the case, which is usually down towards the power supply. Your PS uh, mouse and keyboard will be going to the top. And it's fairly easy. You just slip it in here. And I said, I said it's fairly easy, it's giving me headaches tonight. And let's see here. There we go. And you just, it's just friction fit, guys. It just clips into the four corners. Every once in a while, you may have to take the butt of your screwdriver and kind of tap on the corners to make sure it's in there good, but that went in pretty, pretty easily. Since this is an ATX case, I've done test fit it once, and I know there's nine standoffs on the board. There's nine standoffs on the case. I've done matched them up off camera, and they do match up. So the extra two that comes with the case, I will not need. That's usually if you need, if you're using the uh, micro ATX board, you'll need them extra two standoffs. And they're pretty simple. They just screw down in. It's usually a five millimeter socket to put them down in. But anyways, to show you what I mean by dry fitting it, I'm gonna dry fit it again. I'm gonna put it down in here. Put it where it belongs. Okay. And underneath each one of these screw holes, all nine of them, you should be able to see threads to where the screws are gonna meet up at. You also want to check back here and make sure all your ports are sticking through. Make sure there ain't none of these little metal straps in inside of any of your sockets, inside of any of the ports, I'm sorry. Because um, that could interfere and mess your motherboard up. You want to make sure they're all lined up straight and everything's sticking through properly. Sometimes you'll have to wiggle it around a little bit to get the line up. Just like that. I had to wiggle it a little bit. Um, that should line up. There we go. All lined up. I'm checking all nine of my holes. Make sure there's screw holes underneath of them. And I know there's only nine standoffs, so I don't have to worry about any other ones being any place else underneath the motherboard, which is important. If there's any underneath there that ain't hitting the screw hole, you want to take them out because it can fry and will fry your motherboard. Once everything's lined up right, you can start anywhere on the motherboard you want. And start putting your coarse thread screws down into them. Uh, the, no, no, uh, no particular order. No, you know. Um, I've just gotten in the habit of kind of hitting and messing around the motherboard. And again, I'm not tightening them down all the way. Just barely getting them started right now. And as I say that, I lose a screw. That ain't good. Hopefully we can get it wiggled out. Aha! Found it. If that screw would have fell down behind that motherboard and touched two pieces of metal together, it could have sorted it out and made the uh, motherboard short out and go bad. You definitely don't want no metal behind these things that ain't uh, ain't being screwed to. And again, you know, I've been doing this for five plus years building computers. Um, and you will make mistakes. You know, stuff does happen. You know, you just have to take your time. 
Don't get in a rush. Take your time and make sure you do it right. Now it's like my grandpa used to always tell me, if the job's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And for some reason that screw don't like that hole. Let's try a different screw. I'm seeing the screw head. There we go, that one took. And we got nine screws. But we're only going to put eight in here. If you guys remember, um, the middle post in this motherboard right there, it's a little post that sticks up to hold your motherboard in place. So there ain't no screw that goes in it. So you're only going to have eight screws instead of nine. That's just something to keep 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 track of. So if you count out nine screws and you end up with one left over, double check yourself and be sure you got a screw in all the holes. But a lot of the newer cases and the more expensive cases has that post nowadays, especially the Corsair cases. And I'm just going around, guys, and kind of finger tighten these things. I ain't, you know, I'm not torquing them down yet. I ain't, uh, I ain't even putting them as tight as they have to be or as tight as they should be. I'm just getting them started a few threads and that's it. There we go. We're getting her now, boys. As I drop a screw. Yeah. All right. Well, back out fellas right there it is it fell all the way through if it wouldn't have fell all the way through like that I'd have been taking the motherboard back out but I got lucky and it fell all the way through so I don't have to take the motherboard back out again all right let's get a quick scan here okay I'm still missing one down there in that corner yet Guys, even after building computers, you still run into mistakes, you still run into errors. Take your time, relax, and do what it takes to do the job right. I can't emphasize that enough. I right, see so you drop a screw and be too lazy or too anxious not to pull your motherboard back out. Three months down the road, your cat bumps your computer. That screw makes contact between two metal ports torn the back of your motherboard and fries your motherboard. Then you're out the price of the motherboard. If you're lucky, it's just the motherboard. Depending on what it hits, it may fry your motherboard, your CPU, your power supply. It may, it may, it may do your whole system in. And me personally, if it's my personal rig or if it's somebody else's I'm building, I don't take them kind of chances. I kind of have a reputation for doing the job right. And I want to make sure it's done right, especially when it's a customer system. Because with no more than what I make on a customer system, I get one support car call. I've done lost all the money I've made on the build of the system. Now the motherboard should be good and installed. There we go, got all eight screws in it. I had nine laid out and I got one left over laid over here. Okay, I know I didn't show you guys this cabling, um, which I'll show you the back and show you how I ran it. And this is what I wanted to get a close up of was me plugging these cables in. You can see this eight pin connector right here. See if I can get you a better view of that. Right 
right there it says ATX 12 volt you see the little clip on the upper side of the where it plugs into you take your 12 your 8 pin 8 pin right there make sure the clip is facing the same way and it plugs right down on there just like so guys it ain't that hard it only goes on one way you gotta make sure the clips is facing the right way or it won't go on well I got you handheld here we're gonna go down there and do the 12 pin, the 24 pin the same way there's your 24 pin connector you got a clip lip right here that this clip catches on bend it around line up your ports and then you'll hear a little click there it is it's on there it ain't going no place HD audio HD audio on this motherboard this will vary from motherboard to motherboard but it's right over here it says F audio it only goes on one way because it's got a pin focus there we go got a pin blocked off and it's got a pin missing it only goes in one way and that there cable right there will hook up your front audio jacks for your uh, mic and your, uh, and your audio make sure we get down on there good and it's on there fellas the USB 3 cable this cable is fairly easy it looks like in no other cable on the board or any other cable in the system and on this motherboard it plugs in right here where it says front USB 3.0 you got a notch you got a key on the wire and you got a notch in the plastic piece you just slide it down in so you got it lined up right plugs right down in you hear that little click I mean she's in there which I really don't care for them but I wish they had some kind of little bit better mechanism to hold them in all right if you look at this uh, if you look at them there's a little etching at the bot very bottom of them let's see if I can get you in there a little bit closer to them focus 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 I don't know how clear you can see them etchings, but it tells you where which one plugs in at. And you just kind of line them up and you go with them. Let me see here, see if I can do this while I'm recording. And we have. Let me pull out my flashlight, maybe. Maybe that'll help you guys a little bit too. Uh, we got the PLED with the positive to the left that is the power indicator okay find the power indicator that's the reset switch that's the power LED you notice this one here is split in half one's got a small X on it one's got a small negative uh, and by looking at the board the positive goes towards the back of the computer case so match it up and slip it down on I think it'd be a lot easier if this wasn't a one-man show recording this but that's all right that's all right I'm gonna show you guys how to do all this stuff it ain't rocket science and don't take a brain scientist to do it Right, before, right below that is HDDLD with negative and positive. You notice on the back of this cable, you don't have a negative and a positive. Your positive is represented by that little arrow pointing up. I don't know if you can see that little arrow right there by my thumb or not. But you make sure the positives to the back of the case is indicated by the motherboard, which that varies from motherboard to motherboard. on the pins 
and push it down one. There's them two. Alright, and what's this one? Reset switch. Um, that's the speaker. Resets the green ones with the uh, positive coming the opposite way towards the front of the case. So again, you get that little arrow that's positive. Then you make sure it's coming towards the front of the case. And it slides right down on top of the green ones. Just like that. And what the hell is that one? I can't see what that one is. That there is the power switch right above that one. Okay. Which way is the positive on that one? The power switch positive is to the left. Okay, well, Gigabyte's made this one fun and interesting to figure out, haven't they? They got them going every which way. Power switch, which the switches really don't matter on the negative and positive. But if they're indicated, I like to do them the way they're indicated. And I think I did the power LED on the wrong one. I think this here was the power LED. Yeah, power LED comes down here. And your positive is separated on this motherboard. It's kind of hard to read some of this fine writing, guys. If you can't read them on the board, they are listed in your manual. Which, most of the time, is more complicated to read than what the board is. Okay. So we put that one there. Then the negative one goes over here. And just like so. And that's your front panel connectors, guys. I hope you can see that when I was doing it. I'm going to go ahead and do my side of cables. There's your side cables on this motherboard, the right connectors. Okay, if you look at the little diagram, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, there's six of them. Um, it's just me, you don't have to. I like having my boot drive hooked up to zero. And my other, and my uh, HHD, which that ain't my boot drive. I like having that connected to one. It's just easier for me to go to troubleshooting which drive is connected to which one. That's why I do it in the order that I do it. You don't have to. You can plug it into any of them and they're all going to work the same on this motherboard, guys. Just like that. Alright guys, that pretty well wraps up today's video. That's how you install a motherboard into a case. If you like today's video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos or know when I'm going to post another video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, you be safe and you have a good day. I'll see you in the next video.